but our last speaker for this session is Rafael Ferreira, who, as I promised, will be talking about his work using machine learning um, in collaboration with dairy farms in the area. Um, can everyone hear me on Zoom as well? Um, okay, so thanks, Lauren, for the introduction. Uh, my name is Rafael Ferreira. I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Animal and Dairy Sciences at uh, UW-Madison. And I'm going to talk today about my research on using computer vision for individual animal monitoring dairy farms and how I benefit from CHCC to do that. So just an outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm uh, first going to give a, a little summary of my research uh, and why we need to use CHCC for that. Um, my personal experience with CHCC, what kind of learning resources I use, and uh, some of the use cases that are more specific to my research, and also some of the pain points and the nice to haves uh, that I have as suggestions um, to improve CHC uh, for my personal use. And finally, you're going to talk about some of the personal and professional benefits of that using CHC um, have given me. So, starting with my research. I work at Dr. Doria's lab. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember, but last year he presented at the uh, CHCC week as well. And so basically what we do is we develop research applications. Uh, we develop applications of machine learning and computer vision for precision dairy farming. And what it means is that we try to have a more data-driven approach for dairy farm management and for genetic selection of the animals in the herd. And in order to do that, of course, we need individual animal level uh, information in order to um, make smarter decisions in the farms and also uh, identify the individuals that are the best performing within the herd so we can improve genetic selection. And um, this animal level information goes from uh, evaluating social interactions, behavior, uh, specific information about uh, the body shape that could um, help us detect risk of diseases, for example. And we do all that using sensors. So we can use wearable sensors that are installed in each of the animals. We can use um, infrared uh, spectrography for the feed. Uh, we can use RFID tags to identify the animals. And finally, what we focus the most in our lab is on the use of cameras and computer vision. And the reason why we do that is that cameras are relatively inexpensive and easy to install. So here uh, we have a picture of a few cameras that are installed at the dairy research facility at Arlington. And uh, what is nice about them as well is that a single camera can monitor multiple animals at the same time. And it can work 24 hours a day, seven days a week uh, without interruption and without um, being intrusive to the animals. And also, uh, when compared to other types of sensor, cameras and uh, image data can be very informative. So you not only see the trait that you're interested in, like in here, for example, say you're interested in checking whether the cows are eating or not, but you can also, from the same image, extract information later about the weather, about the quality of the pasture, how green it is, and also the localization of the animals and social interactions and many other more, uh, as long as your um, creativity goes. So the first step for doing individual animal monitoring is always to identify who that animal is. And that's very challenging. There are a few approaches using um, other methods that are not about computer vision, like RFID tags, for example. Uh, but I, I'm going to talk here about computer vision approaches for that, um, because that's uh, my main focus on research. And the other methods also have their uh, limitations. So uh, first of all, we can, for dairy cows, they have very unique coat color patterns that have been proven to uh, being really helpful in identifying them as long as they are actually um, hosting breed uh, which have those unique patterns but for other species and other breeds uh, they can have like many animals can have the same color so it would be almost impossible to do that based solely on their color 
So what we do, there is some research showing that it's possible to use the 3D shape of their body to uniquely identify them based on some biometric features um, similar to what you do with face recognition in humans, uh, but without doing a lot of comparison um, on the methods. Uh, so, and after doing this uh, identification of the individual animals, we can extract those informations that I uh, mentioned earlier, and then we can have a very um, detailed uh, information about your herd for each specific animal that needs to be taken care of that, or uh, some animals that are troublesome or the best performing ones and etc. And in order to, so the main um, approach today for computer vision in, in most of computer vision tasks is what is called deep learning. And that leads to why we use CHCC. So as some of you probably know, deep learning algorithms are usually very complex. So they are designed to extract some very detailed information of uh, high dimensional data, which is an image. And so, and they also require large amounts of data to train, usually in the order of thousands per class. There are some approaches to uh, try and reduce that, but in general, deep learning requires uh, large, very large data sets. And each image itself is already quite large if compared to like a tabular data, for example. So you can think of a single image uh, containing for each pixel, it's as if each pixel is a predictor if you don't treat or if you don't do any type of processing in the data. So it can easily scale to uh, hundreds of thousands of pixels in a single image. And because of that, we usually do some pre-processing before feeding those images to the network so it can facilitate the training process and can facilitate the neural networks to learn what you want it to do. And that could range from, I'm going uh, to talk a little bit more about that, but that can range to basically uh, changing, transforming the images or being only the part you're interested in and so on. And uh, neural networks, as mentioned before, are very computationally demanding to train. Uh, so we could uh, make use of CHEC's uh, high computational power uh, to do that. And talking about image processing, it's very nice that we can have split our full image data set in smaller bits and then process them in parallel using uh, high throughput computing. So instead of uh, performing all the processing in a single job for all my hundreds of thousands of images, we can split that into thousands of smaller data sets and then process them um, at the same time using separate jobs. And even different steps of the pre-processing stage can be done separately as long as, uh, as they are independent of each other or if we already have the results from a previous step. And when talking about neural network training, we actually don't train a single neural network. For each project, we train a dozen, sometimes hundreds of different neural networks. And that's because we have different data sets. So we usually want to evaluate whether a certain uh, pre-processing or data collection strategy works better than the other. So we end up having a bunch of different image data sets that we compare um, to train the network and see which one performs better. And uh, even within the research experiment, uh, not only trying to find the best solution, but trying to understand uh, how certain uh, effects like the time of the day or the lighting conditions of the images uh, um, have an impact on the performance, um, the predictive performance of our algorithms, and that could lead to better decisions for uh, further research when deciding how to collect the data and what to do with that. Um, and also, as um, many other machine learning methods, uh, deep neural networks also require some hyperparameter tuning, uh, which are parameters that are not automatically optimized during the training schedule. So you have to define those beforehand manually. And the best way to do so is to try a bunch of different combinations and train all of them and see which one performs best. So that again requires us to train multiple networks to find the set, the best set of hyperparameter tuning. And CHEC is really useful for that because we can just submit a bunch of different jobs training separate neural networks and send and then they run all at the same time. And finally, uh, deep convolutional neural networks specifically, um, uh, especially uh, which are the state of the art in computer vision, 
require, they greatly benefit from using GPUs. And GPUs are usually very expensive. And in the beginning of our lab, we didn't have our own GPUs. And if you were to use cloud computing services, you could get incredibly, ex incredibly expensive really fast. So it's really nice that CHEC has those pool of C uh, GPUs avail available for us to use. And that's what you use the most in our research. So talking about my personal experience with CHEC, I've been using it since fall 2019. And I've used uh, in the last 15 months, um, more than 8,000 computing hours. And that seems like not so much, but uh, it's um, important to keep in mind that those are all GPU using uh, hours. So uh, if I were to use CPU, that could be translated into maybe a hundred times that, uh, which would be like more than half a million uh, computing hours. Um, so yeah, just to keep in mind, these are just GPU hours. And uh, those are split into between 15 and 20 computer vision, uh, different computer vision projects. And the larger projects require sometimes dozens or hundreds of trained networks. And um, the image data sets can get pretty large, not only for training, but for also for, especially for inference, when you have already a trained model that are happy with, and you want to uh, run inference on new images, those images can um, get, like the, those image data sets can get pretty large because they come from cameras that install capturing images 24 by seven. Uh, so they can get to millions pretty quickly. And my main learning resources are uh, the CHTC official computing guides that are available online. They're really helpful with the older source codes and going through how to set up a Python environment, uh, how to uh, better schedule jobs and et cetera. And the CHTC facilitators also helped a lot with uh, troubleshooting some GPU errors I've been having in the beginning and also with some uh, general optimizations and um, tips to optimize my pipeline and even explore new functionalities like remote, remotely submitting jobs through Python in our own server. Um, so the main features or the main um, way that I organize my projects is usually that I store data on staging because the image data sets can get pretty large. Uh, I use Python environments using Miniconda, which is really nice because for different tasks, I can have different Python environments and I just uh, set up which Python environment to use uh, from a, a list of packed environments that I have on Squid. I usually queue my jobs using text files, which is really nice because it can easily set up different hyperparameters and different um, data sets to be used for each job to train a, a separate neural network. And the, um, the most important uh, part here is that I have different template folders for each category of project. And I'm gonna go through uh, some examples of them and some use cases. So computer vision tasks, uh, the most important ones can be um, divided into classification, detection, and segmentation. Uh, classification is basically you have a single object in your image and you want to um, classify what that object is. So in our case, for example, we have images of cows and we want to identify who that cow is. And so we are gonna have uh, an expected format as an input data set and output data set and any other image classification test that you want. We don't have to just adapt those data sets and all the other um, CHCC related files are ready in the template that I set up. Um, for object detection, you have multiple objects in the same image and you want to detect where they are and what, um, and what they are. And similarly, you just, uh, if you need more, um, if I start a new project for object detection, I already have all the templates set up and it just needs to follow this um, format, which is for each image, I also have the bounding boxes related to each object that I'm trying to detect, in this case, a cow detection. And finally, for segmentation, um, we would be a more detailed contour over uh, inside the bounding box of each object detected. And so instead of having just a list of bounding boxes, I'd have um, a mask, uh, our, our image mask with the same size as my original image that just tells where, for example, the cow body is so I can remove background before feeding it to a neural network. So uh, some pain points and nice to have is that um, large data sets can take a long time to transfer to CHC, especially during the pandemic, working from home. 
I was using VPN. It was a nightmare to upload large data sets to CHCC. So it would be nice to uh, be able to have CHCC access that data directly from uh, our storage units. And not being able to see the log when a job is held is also a pain point because sometimes I want to check um, if I uh, pass the, for example, 12 hours limit, I would like to see in which epoch the job was interrupted. So I know uh, how to, like how many epochs I need to train. So I'm gonna go try to go a little quickly, sorry for going over the time and taking break time. Um, so one final pain point is that uh, I have to frequently check if jobs are done running. So it'd be nice to have some sort of notification system. I don't know if I could implement that. Um, and also a final thing is that it would be nice to have uh, access to the logs while the job is still running instead of waiting uh, for the job to be done. And just I'm going to go very quickly, some final personal and professional benefits is that uh, CHCC allows us to run uh, dozens of jobs in parallel and that really increases the scope of our research and the impact of our research. And um, on a more personal level, it, it was my first experience accessing a remote Linux server. So it's very useful for learning uh, Linux commands and how those systems work. And I might come across other high throughput computing systems in the future. So it's uh, nice to already be familiar with how they work. And also uh, thinking about programming, it helped me try to think more on how to break my program into smaller pieces that can be run in, independently. And finally consider all the data flow and automation in remote server environments. So finally, uh, CHCC basically made our research possible from day one when we didn't have GPUs and we still needed to train a bunch of different networks. And um, it's really nice to have those very high uh, processing power available, temporary storage, uh, being able to run a, a, a lot of jobs in parallel with, without having uh, my computer at home run and uh, being hot for hours and also having access to GPUs, which are expensive and hard to get. So I really appreciate that. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry again for taking some of the break time and I'll be open for any questions.